So many of these young people are looking for release from the guilt they feel for things they say they witnessed or did in the name of war. Things that our unit did and things that, that the military did in Iraq, um, as far as killing civilians, uh, sometimes indiscriminately, um, that kind of thing. Is that what your unit did? That, 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 that kind of thing happened sometimes. Can you give us some examples? Well, um, for example, when, um, when, when IEDs would go off and prove the explosive devices uh, by the side of the road, the instructions were, or the practice was, to, to basically shoot up the landscape, anything that moved, and uh, that, that kind of thing would happen a lot. It happened, yes. My turning point was after I came home and watched like videotapes of me and how I was acting and how my friends were acting and you know it was real reflective to sit back and watch yourself saying those kinds of things and you're like in your heart you know that it's not it's not right. Videotapes that you and your comrades shot in Iraq of mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. Just what after after during people, raids, uh, after raids. I mean a lot of every truck. Somebody had a camera on it. I mean, everybody was videotaping and stuff all the time. Got pictures of uh, Iraqi soldiers beating up civilians and, you know, that kind of stuff. So you were filming as Iraqi soldiers were beating up civilians? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it didn't bother you? You know, you get so into it. You're so submersed into it. That's your job. It's what you're here for. You know, so you just do your thing. But your job wasn't to go and beat up Iraq. I mean, your job was to, right. to bring democracy, right. wasn't it? Right. I, mean, that, I mean, that is the job. And I wasn't beaten up, and neither were any of the soldiers I was with doing anything. But, yeah, I filmed it. I mean, what am I going to do? It's their police station. I mean, it's not my business. And they were laughing and joking as they did this? Oh, yeah. And you were laughing? Yeah, it's so, yeah. And you feel bad about that now? Or? Yeah. I do. I mean... We acted inhumane, and a lot of soldiers down there are very inhumane. So on the outset, was there much consideration about the Iraqi people in your mind? Oh, no, no. I mean, it, 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 that came later on, definitely. But uh, no, I wasn't concerned about them at all. Is that something of you personally, or was it something that was drilled into no. you by the military? I mean, I mean, that's why they call them Haji. I mean, you got to desensitize yourself from them. They're not people. They're animals. What upset you the most about the things that happened in Iraq? The total disregard for human life. I mean, I would have to say it was... I mean, you do what you do because at the time you feel like you need to, but then to watch it get kind of covered up and shoved under a rug and, you know, oh, that didn't happen. What kind of abuses were going on that you experienced? Well, I mean, I've seen innocent people being killed. Uh, IEDs go off and you just zap any farmer that's close to you, hit them with the 50 or the Mark 19. Uh, you know, those people are out there trying to make a living. But on, and on the other hand, you know, you get hit by four or five of those IEDs, you get pretty tired of that too. So, I don't know, overall, just the total disregard, how they basically jam into your head, this is Haji, this is Haji, you know, you totally take the human being out of it and make them a, you know, a video game, the a target. The were doing that, your command? Oh, of course. Yeah. Up to what level? I mean, everybody. I couldn't say that it was like anyone in, in Vietnam. Sorry. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And if you start looking at them as humans and stuff like that, well, God, how are you going to kill them? So... What was the story about them sometimes throwing spades off to make it look like if someone had been killed innocently to make it look like they were trying to take an ID? How did that work? Oh, I, our guys didn't do that, but the people that I came in with, uh, we replaced them and we were doing what's called a right seat ride. And they basically take one soldier and put him in a truck with the other guys that are veterans and that have already been there and done that. And they take you around your AO teach you about the area that you're operating in and whatnot and you know they would be like you know keep shovels on your truck or an AK and if you see anybody out here at night shoot them along the roads you know 
shoot them. And if they aren't, weren't doing anything, throw a shovel off. They were digging an IED or whatever. So they throw they throw a shovel off the APC or whatever, uh, the Humvee or whatever mm -hmm. it was, and try and make out these guys were digging IDs if they'd been killed instantly. Oh, at that time, when we first got down there, you could basically kill anybody you wanted. I mean, it was that easy. You didn't even have to get off and dig a hole or anything like that. All you had to do was have something there for a picture. You were driving down the road, three in the morning, there's a guy on the side of the road, shoot him, throw a shovel off, there you go. I mean, I, I, I had a personal experience after one of the talks that I did with, with a man. He, he came up to me after that, and he told me he was an Iraqi man. And he said that he was from the area around Balad, and I was stationed in Balad. And I just, I, just, I just couldn't help it. Just all of a sudden, I hugged the guy. And I said that I was sorry, that I was so sorry. And I ended up crying right there to this perfect stranger. And he told me it was okay. You know, he told me it was okay. And that, that was, that was redemption. That was redemption. And it was beautiful. And that's, that's, that's why we come here and do this.